Hello everybody. Today we are going to do social science lesson number 7 that is the Mughal Empire. Let me tell you about the introduction of the lesson. Babur invaded India in 1526 and after overthrowing the Delhi Sultanate established the Mughal rule. In this lesson the reign of Akbar and Aurangzeb are described. Their administration and contribution to culture are also explained. At the end, the causes for the decline of the empire are mentioned. So here, when Babur invaded India, he invaded India in the year 1526 by overthrowing the Delhi Sultanate. Previous lesson, you have learned about the Delhi Sultanate, where this Babur, who came from Afghanistan, invaded India and overthrew the Delhi Sultanate and established the Mughal rule in India. And also, you are going to learn in this lesson about Akbar and Aurangzeb and describe about their administration and their contribution to culture is explained in this lesson. And lastly, at the end we come and see the causes for the decline of the empire is shown in this lesson. Let us go to the competencies as to how we have to learn this lesson. Study the lesson by appreciating Akbar's liberal policies and achievements. So what were his policies and his policies were very liberal and what were his achievements we will be learning in this lesson. Understanding how Aurangzeb's narrow-minded policies led to riots in the country and ultimately to the decline of the dynasty. So the decline of this dynasty came because of Aurangzeb's narrow-minded policies. We also appreciate how the Mughal emperors enriched the fields of literature and art. So we are going to learn about the Mughal emperors. We are going to appreciate how they have enriched the, in the field of literature and art. Then we are going to see the marking on the map, the historical places relating to the Mughal era. Now let's read and enjoy the lesson. There were three empires in the history of India. One is Mauryan Empire, second is Gupta Empire and the third one is Mughal Empire. The founder of the Mughal dynasty was Babur. He was ruling a small region in Afghanistan called Kabul and was waiting for an opportunity to attack India which was rich and prosperous. So here the main intention of Babur was to conquer India or attack India which was a very rich and prosperous country. Before the Mughal Empire which he set up they were Mauryan Empire and Gupta Empire. And the third empire which Babu set up was Mughal Empire. He was the founder of this Mughal dynasty. And he was, before he invaded India, he was ruling a small region in Afghanistan called Kabul. Let me continue. Taking advantage of the growing weakness of the Delhi Sultans, Babur invaded India and ended their reign. But he could not stop at that because the Rajputs and the Afghanistan resisted him strongly. The brave warrior that he was, Babur, with his powerful weapons, forced the opposing enemies, armies to retreat. Soon Babur conquered Delhi, Agra and the surrounding areas and established his kingdom. But he died soon. 
his son Humayun ascended the throne. Here, let me explain to you the the advantages of growing weakness of the Delhi Sultan gave him an opportunity to invade Delhi and end the Sultanate reign. But he could not stop at this. He resisted the Rajputs and the Afghanistans strongly. The brave warrior that he was, as we know, Babur was a brave warrior. With his powerful weapons, he opposed all his army. He opposed, sorry, he opposed all his, um, opposed all his enemies. Soon, Babur conquered. Delhi, Agra, and the surrounding areas, and established his kingdom. But he died soon. After him was Humayun, his son, who ascended the throne. Now let us go to Humayun, his son. That is Babur's son. Though Humayun managed to overpower his enemies in the beginning, he had to face defeat at the hands of Afghan. Chieftain Sher Shah Suri. Having lost his kingdom, he fled to Persia and stayed there for 15 years. When Afghan rule in India weakened, Humayun invaded India and conquered Delhi. However, he died within a short period thereafter. Here we are going to see the life of Humayun how he managed to overpower his enemies at the beginning. Later, he, def he, were, he had to face defeat in the hands of the Afghan chieftain who was Sir Shah Suri. He lost his kingdom and he fled to Persia. And he also stayed there for 15 years. When the Afghan rule in India weakened, Humayun invaded India and conquered Delhi. However, he died within a short period thereafter. Here you can see the picture of Humayun. Now let us go to Akbar. Humayun's son Akbar had always aspired to build a vast empire in India. Within this, in, within this intention, with this intention, he tried to persuade the mighty Rajput kings to support him. Some among them joined hands with him, but Rana Pratap Sima of Mewar opposed Akbar tooth and nail. He was a proud and brave warrior. Later, a fierce battle between the Rana and Akbar took place at Haldi Ghat, that is in Rajasthan. Though Rana Pratap Simha was defeated in the battle, he did not bow down to Akbar. Thereafter, Akbar engaged himself actively in military campaigns for many years. As a result, he conquered Gujarat, Bengal, Kashmir, Kabul and other areas and built a vast empire. Here let, let me tell you about Akbar. Akbar was Humayun's son and he built a vast empire in India. He tried to persuade the mighty Rajput kings to support him. Some among them joined hands with him but the only person who opposed him was Rana Pratap Sima of Mewar. This person was proud and a brave warrior. And later, a battle took place between Rana and Akbar at Haldi Ghat in Rajasthan. Though Rana Pratap Sima was defeated in the battle, he did not bow down to Akbar. Thereafter, Akbar engaged himself in the military campaigns for many years and also he, 
the, he conquered Gujarat, Bengal, Kashmir, Kabul and the other areas and built a vast empire in India. Here you can see the King Akbar in the picture. Let us know and understand the Akbar's achievements in administration. Akbar was an able administrator and a broad-minded ruler. He possessed many of the qualities needed for a great king. He was not a despotic ruler. He realized that in order to pursue his vast empire, it was necessary to win the trust of his Hindu subjects who formed the majority. He appointed Hindus to high posts in his court. He withdrew the personal tax called zizia, which was imposed by the early Muslim kings on Hindus, and also the tax levied at pilgrimage centers. Akbar's land revenue policy was well received by the people. It was framed by his revenue minister, Raja Thurmal. Here, children, we have to see to the achievements which he made in administration. First, he was an able administrator. He was also a broad-minded ruler. He possessed qualities needed for a king. He realized in order to perceive his vast empire, it was necessary to win the minds of the people, that is his Hindu subjects, who formed the majority. He appointed Hindus in his court and gave them high posts. He also withdrew personal tax called zizia which was imposed by early Muslim kings on the Hindus. He also the levied, he also removed the taxes levied at pilgrimage centers. And lastly, Akbar's land revenue policy was well received by the people and it was framed by his revenue minister, Raja Tordal Mal. Now let us go to his religious policy. Akbar was tolerant of other religions. He constructed prayer hall, Ibadat Khana, in his new capital, Fatehpur, Sikri, where he discussed religious matters with leaders of various Islamic sects. He invited Hindu, Jaina, Buddhist, Parsi and Christian leaders to discuss their views on religious issues. As a result of such discussions, he involved a new sect called Dini Lai. It incorporated some of the best principles of different religion. However, it could attract only a handful of followers. Here, let me tell you about his religion, religious policies. He tolerated all other religions. He also constructed a prayer hall in his new capital called Ibadat Khana Fatehpur Sikri, where he discussed religious matters with various Islamic sects. He also invited Hindu, Jain, Buddhist, Pharisees, Christian leaders to discuss their views on religious issues. As a result of such discussion, he evolved a new sect called Din E Lahi. However, it could attract only a handful of followers. Let us go to the patronage to arts. Here Akbar, he patronized literature and art. Faizi, Abdul Fazal and Birbal were the distinguished poets in his court. So he patronized 
to these two people that is Faizi Abdul Fazal and Birbal. The immortal singer Tan Singh adored his court. Akbar's contribution to architecture and painting are also remarkable. Here you have a singer called Tan Singh who adored his court. And Akbar's made a great contribution to architecture and painting and which was very remarkable. Jahangir and Shah Jahan, who succeeded Akbar to throne, continued his policies to a great extent. So after Akbar came Jahangir and Shah Jahan. These are his successors and they continued his policies to a great extent. Shah Jahan achieved fame by getting the famous Taj Mahal built at Agra, the mammoth red fort at Delhi and the other stately palaces. So here the successors that is Jahangir and Shah Jahan, Shah Jahan achieved fame by building the Taj Mahal in Agra, the mammoth red fort at Delhi and other stately palaces. Now let us go to Aurangzeb. Shah Jahan's son Aurangzeb is the last well-known Mughal emperor. He ruled for a long period of 50 years. During his period, the empire expanded in all directions, but at the end it declined rapidly. So here Aurangzeb, as we know, he is the son of Shah Jahan. And Aurangzeb was the last well-known Mughal emperor. He ruled for 50 years. During this period, he expanded his empire in all directions and it declined rapidly later on. Now let us go to his religious policy. Aurangzeb was an orthodox Muslim. Orthodox is very stern, very holy, Muslim. He stayed away from drinking wine, gambling, entertainment and music. So he was against all these things which he did not like. He was away from the wine, gambling and entertainment and music. He lived a simple life. Aurangzeb gave up the liberal policy of Akbar. So here... Akbar, as you know, he was very liberal and his policies also were very liberal. But Aurangzeb, he lived a simple life and gave up all the liberal policies of Akbar. He reimposed the zizia, zizia which is the collecting of tax. This led to many political revelations. Here you can see the picture of Aurangzeb, a very simple man and an orthodox person. Let me continue to his revelations. The Sikhs and the Rajputs strongly opposed Aurangzeb in North India. Shivaji rose in revolt in the Deccan. The revolts continued for a long time. And as a result, Aurangzeb lost enormous wealth, a large part of his army and worst of all, his prestige. Many provisions of his empire became free. The Deccan was snapped. Aurangzeb's economic power as well as military strength. Being exhausted, he died in Deccan with his death. The Mughal emperor was greatly weakened. Here you can see his revelation. The Rajputs and the Sikhs, they opposed Aurangzeb very badly in North India. In the Deccan, that is in the south, Shivaji rose against him. He revolted against him. And this revolt was continued for a long time. So what was the result? Aurangzeb lost enormous wealth and large part of his army and the worst of all was he also lost his prestige there. 
many provisions of his empire became free. The Deccan was snapped Aurangzeb's economic power as well as military strength. So he started losing his strength and his empire also was declining. Being exhausted by all this, he died in the Deccan. With his death, the Mughal empire was greatly weakened. So soon after Aurangzeb died, the Mughal empire was weakened. Let us go to the cultural contributions of the Mughals. Mughal administration. The emperor possessed all civil and military powers. His judgment was final in all matters. The empire was divided into provinces, that is, subas, districts, sarkars, and taluks, paraganas. The Kotwal looked after law and order in the cities. So here you can see the Mughal administration that is the emperor, the emperor possessed civil and military powers and the emperor's decision was the final in all matters. He divided the empire into provinces like the Subhas that is districts, sarkas and taluks, paraganas. The, the Kotwal looked after law order in the cities. Revenue system. Akbar's minister, Raja Thormal, framed the land revenue system. Under the system, the land revenue was fixed on the basis of the fertility of soil. Here the revenue system was based by Raja Thordal, Thormal and he fixed it on the fertility of the soil. He was Akbar's minister in the revenue department. Literature The Mughals patronized Persian literature in a special way. There were famous historians like Abul, Fazil, Nizamuddin and Badauni in Akbar's court. Akbar Nama is an important literary work of Abul Fazal. Dara Shuko, the Mughal prince, was an extraordinary scholar. He translated the Bhagavad Gita. Though Hindi literature did not receive royal patronage, it flourished on account of the efforts of the Bhakti saints. Rama Charitra Manasa, the well-known work of Tulsi Das, is of this period. Here, let me tell you about the literature during the Mughal rules. The Mughals patronized Persian literature in a special way. There were famous historians like Abdul Fazal Nizamuddin and Badawani in Akbar's court. Akbar Nama is an important literary work of Abdul Fazal. Dara Shuko, the Mo Mughal prince, he was an extraordinary scholar and he translated the Bhagavad Gita. Though Hindi literature did not receive royal patronage, it flourished because of the efforts of the Bhakti saints. And Rama Charitra Manas, he was a well known, the well known of the work of Tulsidas of this period. Let me go to the architecture of the Mughals. Humayun's tomb in Delhi was constructed during the early period of Akbar's reign. He built a new capital near Agra and named it Fatehpur Sikri. The magnificent palaces, mosques and pavilions of this place 
attract tourists from all over the world. The entrance to the Jami Masjid, Bulan Darwaza, here is the tallest in India. It is 40 meters tall. So here about the architecture of the Mughals. The famous thing here is the Uman's tomb which is constructed during this period by Akbar's reign. He built a new capital that is in Agra by name Fatehpur Sikri. They also had magnificent palaces, mosques and pavilions which attracted tourists from all over the world. The entrance to the Jami Masjid which is known as Bulan Darwaza is the tallest here. Here you can see Humayun's beautiful tomb which is at Delhi. Let me continue. The Mughal architecture attained its glory during the reign of Shah Jahan. Moti Mahal, the palace that he built in Agra fort is extremely beautiful. The Taj Mahal at Agra shows Mughal architecture at its best. This wonderful monument was built in memory of his queen Mamtaz Mahal in the 17th century. There are tombs of Shah Jahan and Mamtaz in this mausoleum. It was Shah Jahan who got the famous red fort built at Delhi. Here you can see the Mughal architecture. It attained glory during Shah Jahan's period. Moti Mahal, a beautiful palace built in Agra. The Taj Mahal at Agra shows the Mughal architecture which is the best. This wonderful monument that is the Taj Mahal was built in memory of his queen who was Mamtaj Mahal during the 17th century. And also you can see the tombs of Shah Jahan and Mamtaz in this mausoleum. Shah Jahan got the red fort built in Delhi which is very famous. Here you can see the fort. This fort is very famous. Here you can see the red fort of Delhi. Let us go to the paintings of the Mughals. A new school of painting emerged during the period of the Mughals. There were more than a hundred artists in Akbar's court. The art painting reached its peak under the patronage of Jahangir. Aurangzeb, who was orthodox, in outlook did not encourage painting. So here painting was not encouraged by Aurangzeb because he was orthodox. He was not interested in music and painting as we all know. Still a new school of painting emerged there during the Mughals period and they had hundreds of artists in Akbar's court. And the art of painting reached its peak because Jahangir patronized it. Let us go to music. Music received special patronage during Akbar's reign. The large number of musicians in his court were divided into seven groups. Each day, a particular group gave a musical recital. Tansen was the most remarkable musician of Akbar's court. Jahangir and Shah Jahan also extended patronage to music, but Aurangzeb banned music. However, music lingered in the hearts of the people. So here we must know about music that they had large number of musicians in Akbar's court and he divided them into seven groups. Tanzin 
was the most remarkable musician of this Akbar's court. And the two people who extended the patronage to music were Jahangir and Shah Jahan. In spite of all this, Aurangzeb banned music, but still this music lingered in the hearts of the people. Here you can see the picture of Tanzin, the great musician. Lastly, we come to the decline of the Mughal Empire. The empire began to decline towards the end of Aurangzeb's reign. The reason for the declines are the chieftains became corrupt. So the first reason for the decline of the Aurangzeb's reign is the chieftains were corrupt people. Intense fighting among the claimants. They were fighting for the throne. The provincial governors took advantage of the situation and declared their independence. So the governors here took a, the uh, advantage of this situation, that is that intense fighting amongst the claimants of for the throne. They took this adva as advantage and declared their independence. Aurangzeb's desire to convert India into an Islam Islamic state met with oppositions everywhere. So this Aurangzeb at the end, he had many oppositions from everywhere because he was trying to convert India into an Islamic state. The prolonged warfare with the Sikhs and the Rajputs and the Marathas fully exhausted the resources of the empire. So the Mughal Empire's resources was, was fully exhausted because of the warfare with the Sikhs, Rajputs and the Marathas. In the meanwhile, Nadir Shah, a Persian invader, raided Delhi. He looted wealth amassed by the Mughals over a period of two centuries. He carried away the world-famous Koinur diamond and the peacock throne of Shah Jahan. The treasury of the Mughals became empty. So the end was really tragic. Nadir Shah, a Persian king, invaded India. He raided Delhi completely, looted the wealth, which was amassed by the Mughals for two, centu for two centuries. He also carried away the world-famous Koinur diamond, and also the peacock throne of Shah Jahan and thus the treasury of the Mongols was emptied by this Nadir Shah. Lastly, let us go to the chronology. Babu ruled the Mughal dynasty from 1526 to 1530 CE. After him, Akbar from 1556 to 1605 CE. And last, Aurangzeb's rule was from 1659 to 1707 CE. New words, that is, zizia, the tax that the Muslim kings levied on every Hindu. So, here, zizia means collecting of tax and this was levied only on the Hindus by the Muslim kings. Thank you children. Thank you for watching. Please show some love, like it, share it, subscribe and press the bell icon.